go. Boy, oh boy, it's Woo. an episode of Draw Bomb. That's right. Is something different about it? I can't tell. Um, is the budget higher? No, no, it's no. not. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what uh, budget? Are the, the, the artists more talented? No, God, uh, no. Oh my uh, gosh. Uh, I don't know. What is it? It should be noted that we do make this program entirely off of free software, like OBS Studio for free, Discord free, uh, the Draw Pile free. So no, we have spent absolutely no money towards the creation of, of this this whole quote unquote show. Look, you're not wrong. But second. the main thing that's different about it is it's been a year or something. I actually forgot to check. The Holy moly! Like, a stinking Holy year. Moly moly. Another stinking year. Boy, what oh, and what a great year it's been, right? It's been, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's say so. And what uh, else is different? Um, oh gosh, I can't put my finger on it. Mostly because I can't see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we gotta work on the setup a little bit. It's alright. Well, I don't our, need to see your face. I know what you look like. Our dang mugs are on the screen. Yeah. Despite though, what like, our fans have said. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, way back when when we were testing this out to see like what like how to set this whole thing up for like a good a good stream show, like we were like, What do you think? Should we put our faces on this? And like the person who was watching who uh, they'd been watching since like we started doing episodes like even like three years before this. Four years ago, I guess at this point, but the they were OG like, crew. "I don't think I want to see your faces," and we were like, "Oh, we were hurt." Okay. <laughs> but it's I still guess. funny to me. So it's funny, it's hilarious. You asked us, we did not listen. We got, nope. <laughs> we ignored. Yeah, we said, "I don't care. I feel self-important enough that I will show my face. I shall indulge in my uh, vanity." Right. It's like I can't keep this all to myself. There's a lot yeah, going on at, here. Look at this sexy mug. I want people to be able to to imagine making kissy faces on it. I, I want to be deep faked. I want the fans to be aware of how much I'm drinking while I'm doing the show. <laughs> I want fans to be aware of like how much I'm like gesticulating and moving my hands and not actually drawing when we're we're doing this show. I, I, I feel like we're gonna reveal a lot about ourselves unintentionally throughout this episode. I'm mainly and, doing this to just break the habit of picking my nose all the time. Oh, dude. I, oh, shit. You, got, <laughs> you didn't think about I that. I was picking my nose right before you start, or possibly during this. Like, the, the well, very first thing people may have seen of me was me picking my nose. Well, you know, you get the whole package. We're not hiding. We're not, we're not going to try to give you a polished version of ourselves. That's right. Try and guess the last time I took a shower. And I also have a big fucking, like, bump on my forehead right now. I, I actually did consider putting on, like, concealer. Oh, no, no, don't it. worry about that. Don't change yourself, Ian. You're perfect. Aww. Well, um, except for this big bump. On right, yeah, head. except for that. What the hell's going on there? Yeah. Yes. In, in Indian culture, I believe this is a mandala. <laughs> it, um, yeah, except I think it's intentional. Well, yeah, no, it's, it's a whole, it's, it isn't because they, like, are a fidgeter and, like, they started picking their forehead bumps. They, it's, it's because they're... Um, engaging in a wonderful ceremony of, of marriage and, right. and, right. and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, got it. Well, you know, regardless, here we are. Yeah. I did take Hi. a shower today. Um, normally, I, I'm pretty pretty good on that, but I was. You heard like, it here first, folks. Brandon is in the shower. I was uh, kind of camping the last couple days, so showers weren't. Yeah as prevalent as normal or available hard to find a, a good faucet out in the middle of the woods yeah i should have found a, a dirty 
puddle to roll around in. That would not probably That's been good do. enough. <laughs> That's what you do I mean, when I just you're not take, camping. Uh, yeah. I just take what they call a whore's bath, you know? I just uh, horse get bath? a sink. A whore's bath. Oh. What is that? A, a, it's a, you know, you wash yourself out of a sink with like a wash rag and some soap. Oh. Well, I mean. Just kind of like. I I don't fit into a sink very well, but I. No, you don't, you're not I haven't tried. <laughs> you're not bad. You're not. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> I like to go to a rest stop and climb in the sink like a cat. Oh my god. Were you on acid? Um. Sure, let's say that. That makes it more <laughs> acceptable. When I. You know, like those weird, like, dream stories that are clearly not true that people tell you to, like, get you scared from. from like, like, like urban. Like like, like, oh, drugstore. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, like, the one time I remember somebody telling me about, like, dude, these dudes were on acid, and this one guy was like, oh, I think I'm an orange. So the friends, like, threw the orange in the garbage disposal, and then the friend killed himself. And, like, every time I heard that story, I was just like, first of all, there's a lot that you're leaving out of the story that, I mean, what, did he all of a sudden, like, get ground up by a garbage disposal, like, right there on the, like, what happened? And then... There was a wood chipper out back that he threw himself into. There you go. He just reenacted everyone's favorite scene from Fargo. <laughs> but, um, the, uh, the other thing that, uh crosses my mind when i think of that story now is i've done acid uh, by, by this point and uh it doesn't work anything like that you don't see some shit and go like unless i mean i've only ever done like one tab at a time or anything like right. that but maybe he did all um, the acid there is in the world yeah maybe he like i once talked to like this guy who was like telling me he's like yeah i do like 20 tabs and do a barbecue with some friends and, and i don't know how that even works nobody's actually but, there except for him right exactly like oh you're sure you're friends <laughs> But, uh, I just, uh, it doesn't work like that. You don't right. see some shit and go, like, I'm that object, man. You'll see something and you'll be like, dude, the skin on that orange is, like, vibrating. And Everybody like, thinks, oh. like, the hallucinations are, like, you see, like, then an elephant came walking into the room. Yeah. Like, no, that's not, that's not how it works at all. Then I met Satan. <laughs> it's, <laughs> right, yeah. And then he turned into my mother and, it, like, you're thinking of a dream. <laughs> yeah, um, they're different things. Yeah, it's 100% a different thing. Let's just talk about our drug experiences this whole episode with our faces on I've, camera now that... I've never done drugs. What is drugs? What is, what is drug? What is drug? I don't know. As I sip whiskey, I've never done drugs. <laughs> yes, drugs are for the weak. <laughs> so I, 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 alcohol's a drug. I, I'm not... To the That's what I'm gonna say. Period. That's the stance I'm gonna take. Is that it? Is a drug? Alcohol is drug. I would consider alcohol a worse drug than weed. Definitely. Alcohol. Definitely. Yeah, it's like. It's way worse for you. Yeah. You can no. die from. Yeah. Alcohol. I'm not not arguing that. Brandon, don't you understand? <laughs> Why are you still drinking it? Why? Um, my liver owes me money, so I'm trying to rough trying them to up. come collect. <laughs> my, that's a mighty nice uh, poison filtration system you got going on here. I'm sure it would be a shame <laughs> if somebody were to do something to it. Blam! <laughs> that's the noise I make know. when I beat somebody. When you drink? I said Oh, you give him a mole. Blam! Or is, he, uh, is that a nose hole? Oh, that, uh, I think that wasn't, that, you know what, sometimes when I move the canvas around with my finger, because I'm, I'm using, like, my tablet, right? it'll just, like, put a dot where I'm, like, I knew it was unintentional, I was just doing uh, this shit, but, how dare you, <laughs> pull your pranks and, and yucksters, a yucksters dictionary defines, yucksters, alright, let's see here. Are we gonna go with that one? I was not going anywhere with that. It went further <laughs> than it should have. I did, yeah. Well, first of all, I said the word yuckster, and I don't even know where I was going with that, so. You were inventing new words. I, don't, well, I think yuckster is not a real word, but it's definitely not one I made up. Huh. People who get their yuck yucks in. 
Yuckster. Noun. Uh, uh, a word of yuck, meaning to get one's yucks in. I mean, it sounds like a real word to me. I will not challenge that in Scrabble. Let me tell you. Yeah, I actually, if, if, if someone were to put the word yuckster in Scrabble, even, the, like, unless it turns out it's, like, 64 points, I would not ch- end up challenging it. <laughs> yeah, if it, if it means they're going to win, then I challenge every time. Just yeah, exactly. Because I'm a sore loser. I was thinking about making this one guy up in the corner, like, <laughs> masturbating, like he forgot he had his camera on, but I'm just going to make him asleep. So what do you think, since everybody's been working from camera for, for the first time, what do you think uh, is the worst thing that's happened to anybody out there? Definitely masturbating on the on the on the camera. Right, also, like, Crazy Kyle says hi. What's up, Crazy Kyle? Yo, yo, oh, look, he got the the uh, oh the, the, the emote. emote got approved. Hey, look at that! That's... We're making our way downtown, walking fast. That's great. I'm happy to hear that. What, what would you say is, is the worst thing that's been caught on like a, a Zoom camera? Uh, I don't know. Some guy's probably like, all right, good day work. See you guys tomorrow. And then he like, I don't know, pulls his like, some like person he's kidnapped like out of a chest in the back of the room. <laughs> right? Like murders somebody. Like, I, I bet <laughs> oh, somebody shucks, has how been embarrassing. murdered. I bet somebody has been murdered on Zoom chat. And I bet somebody has had sex with their significant other on a Zoom chat at some point. I just have to assume. What just like for, any right? possible scenario. Like, it's like uh, the infinite monkeys hitting a typewriter thing. It's it, like anything's happened. Like I bet somebody has like, I can't think of anything worse than murder and death. So I mean, you know, or sex. Like those are probably the, the, the main ones that could be bad. Maybe like after work got out, they left their camera on and went over and turned on like Big Bang Theory or something. <laughs> oh no! I uh, Lost I've been hours. watching a lot of Big Bang Theory since I've been at my parents' no. house. No, actually, yeah. Well, I'm gonna keep yeah. making fun of it. You can't stop me. Go for it. I mean, I'm saying it's not like this. You can't the stop me. Watched. Can't stop. Won't stop. I know you want to stop me, but you cannot. So there you go. I can't make you stop doing anything. I want you to stop doing. Like, for instance, I, you know, we're making jokes about kidnapping, but you have kidnapped. You do have people in your basement who I Look, would like to see again. I that... just couldn't afford the rent on my own. So I, I had to I move it. them into my basement. You know, they still aren't paying rent, but I'm, 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 yeah, I'm not sure how that works out. Like, you have, you're spending you know, money I did. I didn't think about the whole plan. I didn't think about the end game. I just... There's a lot of moving parts, okay? You're, you're getting distracted. The thing is, it's going to work. Um, probably. I don't know. Probably. You know, until... It's it's going to work until at one point you're trying to feed one of your, uh, your hostages. And then, like, the plate drops and shatters on the ground. And you go to upstairs to, you know, take the plate away, fix it up, and stuff like that. But then you decide to put the pieces of the plate back together. And that's when you realize that there's a big shard of the plate that's missing, and there's only one potential answer for where that shard of plate could have gone. So you choke and it down you... with a bike lock. Yeah. And then you then you break. That's when you break bad. I I'd say well, that, that's that's that's, that's the moment. That's, that's a pretty that's a pretty breaking bad moment where you you've broken and you are bad now. Although, yeah. honestly, probably the kidnapping was the first. True. stage of that not not so he, much the murder with he the broke more bad hair. although at that point he was still kind of like it was still survival i guess you could say the choking was survival also but he was oh 100 percent. yeah i mean he's still at that point he's still somewhat sympathetic because like he ha- he cries before he does it he lets squeezes he out a walter it, white he, tear he has a walter white tear and he, he, you know he tries to like level with the guy and be like hey maybe i cannot kill you and, and whatever i don't know I don't know what his plan was. I don't know how he thought that that wasn't going to, like... Well, he was going <laughs> to let him go, and then he discovered the, the plate thing, and then... Well, yeah, but, like, even if he lets him go, like, that's still risky as hell. <laughs> yeah, know. yeah, the guy would have killed him. He just... He was almost... He almost made the wrong choice there. 
Well, no, what I'm saying is, even if the guy wasn't going to kill him, like, releasing him, there's still, like, a million, like, ways the guy could, like, go about seeking, like, reprisal for that sort of thing. Like, he gets buddies to, like, come, like, shoot him up. If and he, he would have. And he would have. Yeah, like, there was basically no way out of that situation but, without that guy. But the other guy had almost him. convinced him. Almost. Almost tricked him. Old Walty. Well, that would have been, made, that would've, uh, the show would have been a lot shorter if that would have happened. Yeah. It's about two seasons, and definitely not that whole plane crash that happens in season two. Right. I what this last guy could be doing. Since your uh, screen is your tablet every once in a while, you'll be draw you don't have to correct this. It's totally fine. It's not a big deal. But every once in a while when you're oh, drawing, yeah. you're like... <laughs> Just like shake like... around, like oh no, bear attack! Ah! You know what's funny is I had the choice of either wearing a hat or this like top knot thing, um, but I went with the top knot because honestly, a bit more comfortable. I went with the hat because this way I don't have to do anything. Just hide, I, hide it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, I, I had to look back, and now I see your face. Yeah, you got that little tuft of hair coming out, going like, aren't I a precocious scamp? I'm very intentional. Uh, I spent three to four hours just on the tuft, just to get <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like with a comb, just going like, like no, god damn it, no, <laughs> no. This tuft is not working. It's tough. It's tough out there. For a pimp. No. <laughs> I've heard uh, that it is. I can't say from experience because I've never pimped. But I've, I've heard that it is tough out there for them. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of pimp pride. Pimp, pimp pride. Just the, they get the parade and everything. Yeah. Their life is a parade. A lot of pageantry. I mean, they are always... If, they, if, if the stereotypes are true, they are always wearing very fanciful clothing. And, uh... Imagine they aren't, right? Like... I have to imagine that's not a good a good look if you're doing... I feel like that, if you... An if, illegal operation. As a pimp, if you see a fellow pimp all dressed up like that, you're like... Dressed to the nine. It's like seeing somebody in New York wearing the I Love New York shirt. You're like, oh, they just got into... They're new. <laughs> yeah. They like, haven't learned yet. Wears... Yeah. This guy's a tourist. Well, now we have our cameras talking about drugs and pimp, pimping, and uh, this okay. is so great. We, we can. I, I mean, mostly, I'm excited for us before. being. I'm, I'm excited for us to be deep faked. Like, I want somebody to take my face during one of these videos and then have me just saying the worst possible things that I'd never said, but, I mean, I can't deny it, because, look, I must have said it. There's a ver video of it. There you go. What's the little, like, connection not working icon? So I'm not what? sure if this is... What's, like, a, the little connection not working icon? I don't... I don't... Oh. Well, a lot of times it's, like, it looks like it's, it's like, a plug of some kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and they put, like, a little wall. I'm curious right. to let you know, like, there oh, it is. That's the one. There you go. One of us needs to break our connection just to find out. So <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm gonna go take a. a this should happen naturally. Item. It happens most most episodes. True. Oh, you did fix your internet, or so they say. Yeah, a, a storm knocked it out this a couple days ago, but then it was back up. That's so what that I can live with. It was raining pretty hard. A little earlier. Not, not, I guess not pretty hard. It was actually just kind of raining for like five minutes earlier. Gentle sprinkle. Like, Whoa. Cloudy with a chance of bad Wi Fi. I wish my internet provider could. could, uh. you know. Why, stupid weather. Like, can't they just not have, have weather screw stuff up? Yeah, right? Like... Dumb. Lame. Like, come on. What, new, new to this whole thing? Weather's been around a while, okay? 
weather much. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, uh, I forget, was, was it after the last episode that we streamed when we started playing Fall Guys? Uh, yeah, it was, it was in between last week and this week. So I can uh, officially address the crowd and say I got my first crown. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, I did. I let. It, I we gave it. it to him. I'm, I did it. I lost intentionally. <laughs> I did actually. I watched the footage again. It, it does not look like you lost intentionally. <laughs> I did. Like I would never do that. I I love uh, <laughs> taunting you with my victories, and I would. Yeah, never you were do you that. were enjoying the running joke. <laughs> yeah. You've noticed this. How much steam has left my sales of making fun of you about rock, paper, pencil ever since you got a win. Now I don't taunt you anymore, so, you know, I I would never give give that fun away for free. Hey, I may be a loser, but every once in a while I get lucky. <laughs> so how many wins are you at? One? Just the one. Well, it's more than zero. I kind of stopped playing after I got that win. I was just like, <laughs> you don't like right. the game anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I got what I came for. Uh, any any more attempts to go back and recreate this would just lead to more heartache. Yeah. Now yeah. we play Overcooked. Oh, you do? I mean, I haven't had it installed for a while. I just we can play that. Yeah. It's kind of hard with two game. people, isn't it? Or no? Well, it, it's hard with... It's, it's like a good teamwork game, but like, it's... It's hard with one person, for sure, because, uh, well, it just is. Yeah. With two people, it's weird, because, like, okay, so, in Overcooked by yourself, you get the timer, you have the score you're supposed to beat, and then, like, you have to, like, switch back and forth between your dudes to, like, oh, do yeah. things. Sounds off. And the weirdest part is, though, is that if you're playing single player, like, okay, so you have to, like, chop everything up. So, like, if you... You take an ingredient to go get chopped up. It takes like ten seconds of like continuing. Oh no! There, I'll do what he's doing. In character, well, like multiple people, and I'm like, what? How does that make sense? Like, how 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 do you how do you? Uh, isn't it easier if more people are playing and it takes less time to chop the food up? I don't get it. I don't understand how they. I don't get it. Uh, you know, who knows, right? Also, you cut out for a lot of that, so... Oh, great, <laughs> like, great. In the middle of that whole description. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, it just takes a lot less time to chop things up if you have multiple people in the game. Oh, that's weird. That makes a lot... That makes, yeah, it makes, doesn't make as much why sense would they, to me. Why would they do that? Because, yeah. you know, you need more time to be by yourself. Yeah, exactly. I don't get it. But I, I've gotten... Uh, three like you can get up to three stars per stage in Overcooked One. And when I was homeless, living on my friend's couch, I played a lot of Overcooked to, by myself, and right. uh, I got three stars in every level but the last four, which are like the final chapter. But like that chapter is really fucking hard, so I'm not gonna try. Okay, fair enough. That's still so I pretty significant, though. I would not. I I'm not very good at that game, but it's fun. It also reminds me too much of my real life, and so... That's fair, yeah. Yeah, like, those weird, like, time management ones, like Diner Dash and things like that, it's it's interesting, because I enjoy them, because it's kind of like a weird, like, prioritizing of tasks in your mind, and, like, rapid-fire execution, et cetera, et cetera. But in real life, it's like, that's the same thing, except there's, like, no right answers, because someone's going to be mad no matter what, because the chefs are just going to be like... Oh, whatever, man. It's like overcooked the steak. Serve it. And it's just like, asshole. Like, he's gonna dock my tips, not yours. Right. This is the thing that happens. Yeah. But Which is always in my experience, like, kitchen people and chefs are usually pretty understanding and nice. Yeah. No, uh, that was a joke. I've had. Oh, okay, good. I was gonna say, I've definitely, I've worked with, I've worked with kitchen staff who have been super cool and understanding, like, uh, Aaron, who we, we had on the show, uh, previously, he, I mean, I met him through working in the one restaurant, and, I mean, he was always, like, a super nice dude, he was always cooking food for us, trying his best to, like, make sure we were doing well, 
and like the chef that he was working under then was like really cool about all that too and then when they fired him and then like hired the sous chef and like the line cook uh it, then it like those guys just didn't give a fuck and like they would yell at us about shit and they'd be like hey so they like they want more bread and they're just like well they don't get more bread and i'm like okay but like literally every time i go back they want more bread so i don't know what the fuck you want me to do give them more bread yeah make more bread robin um also that orange guy should be purple because that was supposed to be the oh shit you were absolutely right Whoop. Atlantis says, just make more bread, damn. And yeah, that's the right answer, because what, we're going right, to exactly. piss people off over the complimentary bread? Come on! Seriously. And also, like you said, some are cool. Yeah, that's definitely true. I don't mean to, like, say everybody, they're all a piece of shit, obviously. But there's, it seems like a lot of them are volatile. Not all of them, obviously. I, there's definitely, like, an issue, I under, from what I understand, in, like, restaurants and stuff with chefs, there's, like, definitely issues with like anger <laughs> yeah. and like Comment i here. don't again i don't mean to like disparage all chefs no uh obviously none of this because, is it's a stereotype or it's not true for all of them yeah but I, i've just run into a lot of chefs who are just like angry i don't get it i had a table that was brought it up once and they're like is your chef mean and they're it's like we work in kitchens they're all mean and and I'm like trying not to talk trash about my own restaurants. I'm like, I'm like, I, I, I did it like I knew I was just being like full of shit. But I'm like, I like to think that the fire fuels the, the creative <laughs> creativity in the kitchen. I'm just like, all right, never mind. That's, <laughs> That's like, I'm not just gonna flat out talk trash about this place. Probably should not do that. Yeah. yeah. My favorite part of uh, Kitchen Nightmares though, when like Gordon Ramsay is going to like these different like like places and stuff like that is when he like sits down with the food and then he starts like shit talking the place to like the server who handed him the food and he's just like oh my god is what is wrong with this steak and then the sh the, ser the server's just like uh, we keep telling them <laughs> <laughs> it's like what do you want me to do I, my job is to just give this to people I can't go yeah. in the kitchen and give them pointers on how to cook that, that's like my favorite part of Kitchen Nightmares is because like Gordon Ramsay is like so understanding and in and, and like the episodes and stuff like that I, you know I can't speak to how he is in real life but in the show he's like always like got such a cool camaraderie with like the server yeah. staff and he's just like oh my god these noodles are so these noodles are basically liquid and then they'll just be like it's our chef's special recipe <laughs> <laughs> like, look that's my favorite I know this I think I think a reason a lot of chefs do get so angry on the job is because those kitchens are like so hot and unventilated Definitely. and like Definitely. I'd be pissed off all the time too. And on top of that, it's like, I mean, if you work in a restaurant, you know how kind of like it's chaotic and stupid a lot of it's ran, and that gets frustrating. You know, they they have to deal with that too. So, yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm not just shitting on people in kitchens. It's I I couldn't oh, do yeah. the job. I would lose my mind. I would never. Yeah, I remember the one time though, like Too just violence. to speak on toxic chefs in, in in the workplace and things like that. Uh, the one time, you know, the bread was a big issue is because <laughs> the, the chefs would always make enough bread for like reservations and then plus a couple extras in case like people came in like unannounced or whatever. Um, and you know, obviously that would not be successful in every situation. And also, I hate wasting food, so like sometimes it'd be the end of the day and we'd have like a whole loaf of bread left, and I'd be like, hey, can I just take that bread home and like eat some bread when I get home? Because I'm poor and I work in a restaurant and I don't have a lot of food. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes they'll do it, but then like it became, it came to a point where like they were legitimately trying to throw out the bread before we had a chance to like try and scoop some. Because I remember like the one time we finished work, and then, uh, I, I heard the chefs go quick throw out the cut the kitchen's closed throw out the bread so, and, and I was just like wait 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 <laughs> and then like the chefs like look at me in the eye and like tossing the bread in the trash and I'm just like the fuck are you doing like I'm gonna enjoy that like rude it's, it's weird as shit like why you why are you more happy to throw the bread that you made in the trash than for me to like Someone get it because so, like in my I'm paying the same as the customers like it's free bread right in my understanding, 
it's still dumb. I'm not. I'm not defending it. I'm just. This is the way that it's been explained to me in the past, and that I, I think the concept comes from this. Of what you're explaining. In my understanding, they would rather throw food away than give it to employees because they're in their. I'm not saying this would actually be what would happen, but in their heads, sure. they think if they give it to you for free, people are going to specifically, like. Try and make more try, bread happen. Try so and make more happen, and so they can get it, stuff like that. Like mess up the yeah. numbers so they can get some. And I, I still think that's dumb, but that is that is the okay. reason behind why all these places are like, rather than give away something that's old, they'd rather throw it away because they don't want I mean, it to like people to try to fudge the numbers or whatever. But it's, there's like that makes be a sense way. in like a yeah, like that makes sense in a society where like people are able to get enough food <laughs> right just and, fine and ultimately it's a waste so what? yeah is that really the best case scenario out of the two like it, it's 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 just like a, such it's a weird a waste mindset of food. i uh um, I, I, the one like when i was uh when i was dating my ex-girlfriend like we used to whenever we would finish work if there was if the kitchen was still open if things weren't too big like if things were busy we'd get the hell out because like you know, I just want to get out of there. But, like, if right. things were not so busy, like, we would sit at the bar and have some drinks and, like, talk with, like, whoever was still working there and, with, like, with the bartender and stuff because that's still putting more money back into, like, whoever's still working his pockets. Right. And, and uh, it, like, you know, we had nothing else to do because uh, it was already, like, late at night, so, like, we couldn't right. go anywhere else. And it was kind of like a, like... It was like so that we would get our fill in before like they'd be like let's go to a bar and then like the whole night turns to shit like we'd get our bar experience in first right. and then get the hell out of there. But uh, sometimes we would order the the uh, short rib mac and cheese, which was basically well it's exactly what it sounds like it was mac and cheese with like short rib mixed into it. So delicious most of the time, but then like we were finding that once the chefs found out it was us ordering the short rib mac and cheese. They would they would just cook it like so badly and they didn't give a shit. Oh, shit. and like we were paying customers. Like, to the point, that's bullshit. Yeah, like we were still paying. Like maybe we got like three bucks off on it, but like we were still paying like fifteen bucks or no, like normally it's like fifteen bucks. We got three bucks off. We we're paying like twelve bucks for it, but yeah. like we're still paying money for this food. Like we still wanted. Like sometimes it would legitimately just not be edible, and I like. I would like. I would was, not pay for it. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like we we actually complained after a while. We're just like, hey, look, like, I know I know it's, this seems petty because like we work here and like this is something. It's not petty. They're the ones who are being petty. Exactly, and like we actually eventually found out that like when one particular cook in the back was making a short mac for us, like he would actually do a good job because he was a really nice guy. We loved that guy, and he was like a cool dude. But like if it was like the chef, like if it was Robin or something like that making the short of mac, like it would just come out literally unedible, like. Unless so they have rules saying that you can't, you're allowed to patronize your business. Like, a hundred percent. There's no re that makes no sense. It was, it was, and like that. That's not even to speak on. Now here's the thing, I think some of that may have been exacerbated by some <laughs> things that management had done. Like, uh, our management had set it up so that people in the kitchen were not like it used to be. Like when the day was over. We would all hang out at the bar and have drinks and and you know just shit, shit and like while we like everyone would, like while closing up was happening like while the managers were downstairs like setting up tips and everything like that we'd all be up top having drinks talking having a good time drinking beers etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, eventually it was decided by management that the kitchen staff couldn't sit at the bar anymore like when their shift was over mm -hmm. and that was something that all of us disagreed with and I, I think, you know, when it comes to who's in back of house, who's in front of house, there is a bit of, um, at least for that place for sure, there was some racial segregation oh, on that sure. front. Like, people who worked in the back were uh, a lot less white than the people who were front of house. Okay. And we, and every, all of us, like even us, like front of staff people, we were basically just like, hey, so we're pretty sure that's like a racist thing that they're doing. Like, they don't want the chefs and like the cooks sitting at the bar because they're afraid of having black people oh, wow. in our bar in front of customers and things like that and that's when like that's actually what started a lot of like the weird like there by the time i left that place 
there was like just like this weird division between like front of house and back of staff like back of house like when i was like when i first started working there like we were all cool with each other and then like by the time i left like it was there were like lines in the sand and it was just like such a weird and like that was definitely like the catalyst and start of all of it and it, it was it was because management was shitty and like i remember the one owner of the place like referred to uh the back of house as like the homeboy brigade which oh, we were all like wow that's super fucking racist i wonder why um, that place that guy, shut down i know right and that place like by the way that guy owns like six, 16 like skyscrapers in philadelphia although uh he's dying so fuck him oh. i don't give a shit <laughs> jesus <laughs> He, he, he might have died by this point like last time i heard like when they were shutting the place down like he had severe health problems and uh, he was honestly he was a piece of shit like he was such a terrible person so uh, hmm. like yeah I don't know. yeah like, it sounds it sounds like a turd yeah he was a turd and like it sucks because like for at least two or three years that place was like a not a toxic place to work at and then they just started making all these shitty changes and like it was bad. It was, it, was a, it was a dumb situation. Yeah, that doesn't sound great. At our place, we aren't allowed to drink at the bar, but that's because I think they they fear, and they might be right, that, <laughs> that the, <laughs> the bartenders would pretty much give away the bar, like, you know, free drinks to all the employees. Like, oh, yeah, know, I mean, that secretly. definitely was also happening. And then so also... Like you could, you know, they don't want, they don't want to, like, create the scenario where maybe you get yourself into trouble by getting, like, hammered at your work. Mm. So I think those are the two reasons they don't do it at my place, but yours sound like, like shitty reasons, different, different shit. Well, the thing is, like, I could understand it if it was, like, closed to everybody. Like, if, like, if, if doing what we were doing was all of a sudden not allowed, like, for the entire staff. Oh, but like, it was just back at house just back oh house. shit like, yeah okay that's that's okay i missed yeah. that detail that yeah that's oh yeah that's fucked up that's not cool so, so that's what that's what caused like that like that's why i think it started causing like such resentment between like back of house and front of, and like for the most part it was the back of house that felt the resentment like in front of house we were like we thought it was bullshit we complained like we, we talked to the managers about it and like half of the management there there were two manager there were two managers at that point in time and the one manager was, like i'm still cool with sometimes like if i get if i'm able to I'll, I'll like dog sit her dog if they like go visit family or whatever or whatever but the other manager seemed more okay with it mm. and uh i mean i can't speak for certain but i don't know it, like there was just like like after that rule kind of like was set down and again completely fucked up because it only applied to back of house. Yeah, like, what, what would your even reasons be? I don't know. Uh, like, the only reason we could think of is because they didn't want, like... Well, no, I, I mean, but I mean, I'm mean, i sure that's not <laughs> yeah. why they said was the reason behind it. I'm just curious they what their, like, bullshit said... reason is. They were basically, like, it looks bad for, like, because the kitchen staff is always, like, so swarthy or whatever. <laughs> like, they didn't use the word swarthy, but they were essentially saying, like, because the back of house, after days of work after a day of work is like so swarthy looking or whatever like then it looks bad for the bar I and see. we were all just like that's fucked up <laughs> yeah it's not a good reason i mean unless your place has a dress code it didn't yeah. for sure so somebody could come off the street looking however get a yeah. drink it's so uh, and like yeah so and, was, and was, on the other hand they could just say okay you can come out after but just have a change of clothes or something like that so they that, didn't even do that, that would honestly even be fine yeah like as long as you're not dressed like you know in your kitchen as long as you don't look like, like you know covered in food and sweaty and everything yeah, but but, no, but that's not even an option so yeah that's what makes me think that that wasn't the, the actual intentions yeah we, we like we were we were all like when they passed that rule down we basically all said it we're all just like this is clearly like they're doing this shit for racist reasons see, it seems like sucks. there's some uh some bullshit <laughs> some not there's some yeah. secret motives and like but like they weren't even secret like i it like it was all but set like right <laughs> why like we were yeah it was just it, it, it definitely contributed to a bad culture in that restaurant yeah and things how could it not there. Yeah. i mean if anything all your staff like 
having community is something you'd want. You you would think so. Like we were like we were all so cool with each other in the beginning that it was like such a nice environment, and then obviously that, that stopped happening. Um, I just real quick want to point out. Uh, Solantis says in the chat, no idea what the point of that is. I think it in regards to You was talking to, about like, the bread, the bread throwing the bread out, yeah. Yeah, I, saw I went to a Starbucks thing. all throughout college, and we took home pastries at the end of the night all the time. Corporate hated it. It's yeah, just a waste. So yeah, it's uh, you know I've I've read before that like in France they had to like pass a law so that like grocery stores like basically grocery stores in France were like they would have to throw their food out all the time. And then people were just like, okay, well, like, we'll donate it to the homeless, like, the, the employees. We're like, we'll donate, donate to, like, homeless shelters and things like that. And then uh, corporate was just like, no, it's our food. And they would, like, they fought, like, tooth and nail. That happens in that America, happened. too. That's not... It just... happens in America. But, like, in France, they passed a law, like... To stop that? Where they had to. Yeah. But, like, you know, obviously in America, capitalism is king, so... Right. Some bullshit. Some bullshit. And that's been our TED Talk on uh, <laughs> restaurant culture in America. Go to the draw bar. My face is bumping up and down. I might actually, now that we're doing the webcams, I might stick to a desk for these just to kind of... Do whatever you want. It looks, it's working fine this way. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. But uh, in the meantime... We have here a lovely Zoom call with some bounds. And, uh. It came out pretty swell. I think so. I think it came out looking pretty nice. Alright. So, have you been, uh, watching any TV, any movies, any, any this books? Last, this last week, not so much, because. I've been kind of busy. I had my birthday this past week. That's right. I am Happy a birthday. 30 year old man now. 30 year old Bert. Wait, no. Um, just uh, a man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. How did. <laughs> Sorry to stop you. How did Kyle put the little hand on the bomb? How did this happen? Huh? <laughs> I need to know because that's awesome. What? How did you do that, Kyle? Because we were talking about making that bomb, like, replacing yeah. all the standard emojis with the bomb, but you just sort of did that just now. How did he do that? I don't know how he did that. He knows more about Twitch than we do. Oh, oh, 900 channel points. I don't know if that's <laughs> something he has or we have. I don't know what that means. I have 10,700 channel points, and I believe it's specific, with, like, I think if you're just in the chat, like, you know, I'm always, like, looking at the chat, logged in as myself on okay. here, so, um, I think, like, as I'm watching, I just get channel points over time, uh, in the bottom of my chat, like, this little bubble icon, and then I can, like, highlight messages, unlock a random sub emote, send a message in sub only mode. It says you can modify a single emote. Okay, well, I'm going to do that also. I'm going to steal your idea, because it's great. Um, thank you for the happy birthday, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. I was a little hurt that you didn't say it on my birthday. Um, I was waiting for a phone call, but uh, I guess this will do. I know you don't have my phone number, but oh my god, he did it again. <laughs> Or you see you. That's awesome. That's me. I put oh, sunglasses shit. on him. I gotta <laughs> mess with this after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna clear all this shit. stuff. We'll just have him now, if you on. modify it, do you still get your original version of it? I. Yeah, the original version still comes back. But basically, you get you unlock like with your channel points, you unlock that modified version of the emote for twenty four hours. It says. Oh, okay. I see. Interesting. That's, yeah, looks like the uh, the hand is one. Like there's like five options for it. You can it's temporary. Race I see. I see. Yeah. I w I would make all sorts of emotes, except we don't have we don't have enough. Uh, like subscriber points yet, but we'll get there one day maybe. 
And then, yeah, well, you know. Then we will repay the people with emotes. All the emotes. Emotes are plenty. In them out. We're gonna make it rain emotes, including a rain emote. Right. And a making it rain rain emote. That's right. So, uh, I finished that one book I was talking about I was reading. Can you remind me which one? That one? Oh, oh uh, yes, I remember now, actually. It's like yeah, a it's, it's post-apocalyptic what? type. Not post-apocalyptic, but it's like a... We're dystopian future. Dystopian future. Kind of that's, that's the term I was looking for. Yeah, so... If you don't mind me just real quick diving into this book. Go for this it. Book. So, it's a book called Rant by Chuck Palahniuk. It was... Not yet, like, I didn't ask to borrow it, but, like, basically I, I uh, met up with a person before, like, this whole pandemic happened, and we watched, uh, we watched Knives Out to hang out, because he wanted to hang out, and I was like, alright, I got nothing else going on. So we did that, and then, like, right before I left, he gave me a copy of this book and World War Z, which I am currently reading, um, and... So yeah, I, I was like, I got these books, I might as well fucking read them. Um, that is what I've heard you should do with them. Yeah, yeah I, I was thinking about eating them, and then I decided, nah. It's not even your book, you shouldn't eat someone else's book. Exactly. So, I was reading this book, and it's interesting, because it gives, when you read, like, the, uh, when you read the little blurb that tells you, like, what the book's about, it, 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 it strikes you as like it's gonna be about a totally different kind of book than it actually ends up being. But uh, yeah, it's like about this guy and like it's got like the stupid like future culture and about like driving cars everywhere and things like that. Yeah. And it's like written in the form of a like interview, like interviews with a bunch of people to sort of like collect a history about this one character that the book is about. Okay. And which is interesting in that it, like, lets them, like, jump from, like, interviews of these fake characters to, like, sort of set up these, like, moments in the book. Like, the way they... It, it's an interesting way of formatting the book because, like, each couple of paragraphs is, like, essentially a snippet of an interview that this person's giving. Right. Um, and they, they, can't, they used to, like, set up, like, certain dramatic reveals and things like that. But the book is all right. That is what you were saying good. last time. I was curious if you still felt that way. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, I you think like the more first or less half after finishing it. Less. Okay. It's the first half is very interesting, um, or it's not even very interesting. It's just sort of interesting because, well, it's like the the setup is like this guy died. Um, he got a bunch of people killed. This is his friends talking about him, and. Uh, I figure I'm gonna draw real quick. Hold on, what am I gonna draw? I'm gonna draw a head in a jar. Cool. This episode is titled Head Games because of Foreigner. Um, this so episode yeah, is so... brought to you by Foreigner. Head Games! You're as cold as ice. Drink Foreigner. Uh, I'm trying to think of another Foreigner song. Um, um, I wanna know what that is. Feels like the first time. Feels like the very first time. Anyways, so this book. Is talking about this guy, and like the first half of the book, like the first hundred pages, are about what it, he was like growing up. And he's like this crazy kid, he's always getting bit by like snakes and spiders, he likes getting himself poisoned. Um, Sounds like a crazy like, kid. He's a crazy kid, alright, and he like finds himself like a bunch of. But wait, you just went, whoa? Whoa! He's, he's a crazy, a crazy kid. Oh, he's a crazy Sorry, kid. I mean, Oh, that's right. I thought some like I thought we got like a sub or something like that. All of a sudden, we did not. No, that doesn't happen. Anyways, continue. But uh, yeah. So like he's a crazy kid who's got like a weird sense of everything, and uh, he uh, he like in the book he like finds a bunch of co like coins that are worth like a bunch of money, and he uses that to like essentially buy his way out of school and like out of the out of his like town or whatever. Um. And you're, like, they kind of set up, like, the fact that, like, he knew these coins were here uh, under, like, weird circumstances, and you're like, I don't understand how this kid could, like, they set it up somewhere towards, like, the end of, like, talking about him growing up in a small town that, like, some dude came up and told him where 
he was gonna find all these coins, and then like the kid does, and you're like, how 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 would that even work out? Um, so like that happens, and then the kid moves away, and then goes to the city, and that's when you start to like really get a sense of this weird dystopian future, and then you get a like then you find out about like this weird car culture where people are like crashing their cars into each other for funsies. And, oh, so uh, it's a Mad kind of, Max type situation. Not even. It's like. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Oh yeah, but it, it, I mean, it sort of sounds like Mad Max, like saying it like like that's Not the thing is like worship you don't... cars and stuff. Yeah, but like this book has like all these things. Like everyone who's like interviewed for this book has like a moon and a sun next to their name, and for the longest time, I was just like, maybe that's like if the person's like the character is like dead when this like supposed like history of this character is like released or whatever. Oh. Um, and then what you find out is that people have been like sort of separated into daytime and nighttime in like the large cities by the government to reduce traffic or reduce traffic i was gonna say traffic fatalities but just to reduce traffic honestly i see um and that's what the moon and the sun is supposed to represent next to the name but you don't find that out till like page 210 but the whole time you're reading this book going like why the fuck do these people have like moons and suns next to their names um and then i'm gonna shift my webcam here a little bit and then, um, like, so this kid gets rabies and starts infecting people with rabies. And then there's, like, a couple chapters in the book that think you think, like, they're setting up, like, a zombie apocalypse sort of thing going on because, like, they have, like, this one story about, like, these dudes who straight up do some zombie shit in a strip club because they have rabies or whatever. And then you find out, like, oh, these people also have like these reports in the back of their neck like the movie the final cut with robin williams where they can like record what's, what they're seeing out of their eyes etc etc they like set up all these weird like sci-fi ideas and things like that and most of them just sort of like never go anywhere because the rabies thing just kind of like doesn't ever turn into a zombie apocalypse it just turns into like a it's just like rabies yeah like it's just like salts. rabies and like we're yeah, essentially, it's, it's pretty much what it is. And uh, then, all of a sudden, like, page... Like, they sort of, like, dropped little tidbits here and there to make you think, like, oh, is this about time travel? And then, you, like, spoiler alert for anyone Jesus. who's planned on reading this, like, Chuck Paul book in 2009 is. or whatever. And then you find out, like, it is time travel. Right. And then, like, you f like the book is, like, written, like, this character died, that's why we're writing this book, and then you realize, like, you find out, like, page 210 or something like that, like, oh, this character actually traveled back in time. Homie travel back and give him self coins. Yes. But here's the thing. Here's where it gets really strange, is then, like, they, they set up all these <laughs> because weird Because it hasn't gotten strange and... yet. Exactly. And, like, you're reading the last hundred pages of this book saying, like, okay, so you've set up zombies, rabies, dystopian Mad Max future, time travel what else is there and like also the final cut with robin williams like what else is going to happen with this book and then so what you find out just to like spoil the whole book for anybody mm -hmm. you can feel free to mute me for the next five minutes if you want but spoiler alert wait, you, for all the people who want alert. to read this book i know there's for a lot of who wants, yeah for anyone who wants to read one of chuck paul and lesser books <laughs> um in case you're working your way through his whole uh anthology yeah, in case you want to read the same story eight times over and over again, because he kind of does just sort of write the same sort of story over and over. Um, anyways. Well, not, yeah, that's right. Um, so what you find out is, so this kid was... So basically, this kid is his, his own dad, because what happened is this guy oh. figured out time travel went back in time and then raped his grandmother, no. his great grandmother when she was 13. And then she gives birth to his son. And then Someone, he goes like back- like the plot to a Futurama episode or something? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> like basically he like becomes his own great grandfather, grandfather, and then his own dad. Mm. And then um, you find like, so basically what he's trying to do is he's trying to become his own father throughout all of time because then that means he's immortal because he has no beginning and no end all right and then what you find out though is that the the character that the book is writing about is like the son of himself like four times over or whatever 
And then, like, the last chapter of the book, they interview his mom, and then she kind of, like, tells the story. And I, I wish I didn't have to, like, I wish I hadn't read this chapter, but she basically describes herself getting raped at the age of 13. Oh. And I'm like, I don't want to read this. No this thanks. Is, and, like, it's, like, she doesn't, she goes into just enough detail where I felt really uncomfortable reading these, these like, two pages of this book. And I was like, can you, can you, can you use less detail when you're, yeah, when you're just, like, a, a describing a woman describing, like, her own rape. So anyways, and then what you find out is this character that they're writing the book about had gone back in time to try and prevent this rape from happening, and then he shows up, like, seconds later after it happens, and he goes, ah, I missed it. And then he raises himself as a son and then gives him all these coins and then uses, like, raising himself as a son to help tell his son, tell himself in, like... He tells himself as a kid how to prevent this all from happening. And then in the last chapter of the book, all the characters are just like, I can't believe it. Kid went back in time to try and save his mom from being, like, giving birth to him. And, like, maybe at some point he'll be successful or whatever. And then we'll all, like, this book will just become fiction and none of this will ever actually happen. So they're basically setting it up like the book actually did happen, but he was successful in preventing his mom uh, from, from having all that stuff happen to him. And then the last, like, couple pages of the book are describing, like, you know how, like, at the end of Animal House, it's like, what happened to all these characters after the movie? Ends? Yes. And, like, little sub- they, they do that at the end of this book with all the characters in the book, except for, like, one particular main character, and I don't know how that works out, but whatever. Okay. Anyway, uh, what they, so then, like, the last thing of the book is... Well, first of all, since the book is actually a fiction, like, he was successful because, like, the characters never existed and that's what they set up. But then also you read in the, like, last thing of the book that now the mom is, like, rich and famous and owns, like, a famous game or whatever. So, like, he was successful. Uh, (laughs) I don't know. It's, like, he's going back in time to prevent his own birth because another version of himself is going back in time and trying to become immortal. It sounds good. It sounds like a real page turner. Um, belongs on <laughs> belongs on Oprah's finer favorite things books list. It's a goodie. Honestly, just just read Snuff. It's a it's it's a much more rewarding experience than this book. Like Snuff, that's the, the is frustrating that, is it? What was that? You think a choke? No, I'm thinking of Snuff. Snuff oh, my book. bad. I haven't. I actually haven't read Choke. Oh, okay, my bad. But uh, I've heard good things about Choke. I, I I did read Snuff. I thought Snuff was Snuff is good. I don't know. Like it's it's. I would have to read Snuff again because when I was reading this book, I was kind of like, okay, so like there was like these interesting things that Chuck Palahniuk sets up, and like the occasional like commentary he's making on society is interesting or whatever. But like overall, I actually just didn't enjoy. Like, the book was too much written in, like, the very casual, like, dialogue of the people that are giving the interviews. So, like, there's a lot of people who are just like, imagine this, imagine that. What would you do if blah, 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 this fucking guy over here? And, like, a lot of the book is written like that. And it's kind of, like, fine, but I almost wished I had more poetry in the prose of the book. I see. Like, there's enough writing in this book where, like, I wish it it was, like, less conversational and more poetic. Like, you can do, like, you know, like, Ernest Hemingway, when he writes, his stuff is very, like, short sentences that describe just what's happening, and you're supposed to, like, pick up the emotion from these short sentences that describe what's happening. Like, if the character, like, sits by their bed for an hour, you'll write it, he sat by his bed for an hour, and based on, like, the conversation that he had with the previous character, you're supposed to put together, like, oh, that, that character is sad. And in this book, they're just like, yeah, this fucking guy over here, you know, the stupid thing about ants is when you get an ant, the ant's gonna crawl up in your face, and that's dumb as shit. You shouldn't let ants crawl in your face. And that's, like, how a lot of the book is written. Sounds great. I don't, I don't know what your problem is. It sounds like a wonderful book. It's, it's like, a, it's a decent book. Like, it's competent. I should, it's, I should uh, read some more books. I like books. I like reading. Yeah. I like reading, but I don't do it as much as I should. Can I tell you about Snuff real quick? Let's hear it. So Snuff is about a porn star who's shooting, like, a final porn video, and she's gonna, like, 
do like just take all discs and that's what the, the, the video is going to be about and then you find out in, at the end of the first chapter that somebody wants to kill her and just to spoil snuff for everybody at the end this dude you find out that the dude is trying to kill her um is like the father of her son who is her assistant and you find out like this assistant has been like helping her out throughout the whole book and then you realize like that last chapter she's the assist she's the she's the daughter this porn star guy is this is the the father and then like he like they're having sex for the porn video and then like they get like because he's trying to kill her i forget how it happens exactly but they essentially like get electrocuted and like third degree burns and then they basically fuse at the genitals because like they were having sex when they got electrocuted and then they they were like connected at the crotch it's wild they survive it yeah but like i think they're like brain damaged or whatever i don't know like they don't they kind of leave it open to interpretation because like the, this is like in the last chapter that this happens that they get like fused at the dick and the vagina that's like the most when you when you filter by most watched porn video on Pornhub, <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of weird shit. That's exactly what you. I, I would do. know actually. I'm just saying, like that's what I imagine it would be. I found that video. <laughs> no, but <laughs> it's that's. I mean, that's the climax of that book, and like that book, I enjoyed climax. reading a lot more than I enjoyed reading this book. All right. This book, like, the, the way it was written, it was interesting the way they could set up, like, certain reveals. They could, like, sort of, like, do clips in here and there of characters saying things that slowly, like, build on these blocks so that by the end of the chapter you, like, learn a whole new revelation. And that's interesting, but what it ultimately does, because it's such a fucking confusing subject matter, is it just makes the whole book confusing. Especially because of, like, how little they choose to reveal explicitly at certain points in the book. Snuff is more of a straightforward read through, and I just think it just works a lot better as a book. Some books want to do like the whole reveal thing and make it like this big moment, but it doesn't always work, and sometimes it's just annoying. And it's like, okay, so you're yeah. being cryptic for this reveal, which it didn't even end up paying off. Exactly. Uh, we got Zone Dog in the chat. Hey, Zone Dog. Zone Dog says cameras, and then he says chimeras. Chimera. What is chimera again? It's a mixture of two or more animals. Oh, right. In, uh, in Greek an mythology, animorph, as one might say, as Zone Dog might in, say. In uh, in in Greek mythology, a chimera has a snake for a tail, a lion body, right. and I think an eagle head. I think I beat beat that thing up and got a war once. I definitely fought a couple of those in Final Fantasy X. That's definitely an enemy okay. in Final Fantasy X. God of War, you definitely fight a chimera or two. Animorphs, I just saw him write animorphs. So, I found while you were describing that book, I know you can't see my video, but a really fun visual gag is to make my desk go as high as it can, and then the webcam, it's just like, I just disappear out of the frame. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what Kyle's talking about. We have only about. ways of messing with people. That's right. If I had a green screen, it would really look fun. I wish we did a did for anything. That would be hey, you know, that's, that's the, the next, next step. Yeah. yeah. Elgato sells, like, little, like, stand-up green screens, even though it's, like, that are exactly the size of, like, a webcam background. I have one, but it doesn't have a stand, so I might rig it up myself somehow. Yeah, that'd be cool. I haven't really used it for anything. Kyle oh. says he was introduced to the idea. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I don't have anything to say. Oh. Um, Kyle says, I was really introduced to the idea of Chimera's and Full Metal Alchemist, and then uh, Zone Dog replied with Half Metal Olympus. Yeah, that's that's Which, the stuff. Yeah. H half quarter quarter. Uh, I'm not gonna try. You were almost there. You almost had it. Almost figured out that clever like play on words that would have oh, no. recontextualized that whole title that thing. Oh no, they're fighting in the chat again. This always happens. I wish our community didn't divide into sex. Sex. Such, uh, such a toxic community we have here. I know. It's, uh, I don't know why there's always a, a class war inside the chat. I don't. I, I feel like it's not what we preach as a show, but it just. We were. Keeps happening. Very 
Yeah, we like the community. Hot sex. Um, I can't think of anything else to add to this. Maybe I guess I can add some shading. Wait a minute. Oh, you probably done that later. You mess with my opacity. Briefly. I, I hate when people mess with my opacity. It gets me all fired up. You won't like me when you mess with my opacity. <laughs> That's uh, the Hulk reimagine where he's a designer. Yeah. <laughs> and he sits at a desk. Hey, uh, Bruce Banner, I just have a quick question for you. Um, I like the font that you used for this poster, but we think that maybe the font kerning is just a little too slanted to the one side. Can you, can you fix that for us? Are you talking shit on my kerning? You won't <laughs> like it when you talk shit on my kerning. Uh, that's right, I'll make a new font. Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know enough about graphic design to make any super specific graphic design jokes. I don't know, I just basically give very vague notes like, I really love what you have here, but could you make it more poppy? <laughs> and you're just like, well, well, excuse me? Do what? Huh? What does that mean? Hmm? That's not a, that is not a descriptor for this project. That means nothing. I, I did some tweets about this, like, I want to say a week or two ago, but, um, I, I, I saw a tweet a while ago where somebody was like, Hey, when you're critiquing art, use words like crunchy or sour. I love when people describe things like that. And I was just like, I feel the opposite way. No, I hate when that's people That's useless describe. information. That's completely, that's like saying now, like, this makes me, that's like describing the vibe of a song and like how like the vibe is off when you're like trying to critique a producer. And then like, they're like, okay, so do you think like I should reduce the reverb on the drums and they're just like oh i don't know just like make the vibe more like whatever yeah. <laughs> or, the only the only like, thing i can think when you say like describe design or art with with food words is like a picture of somebody trying to like blow blow off their way through art school and every time they have to like give a critique up yeah, in front exactly. of them, they're like mm, could be more edamame yeah, I feel like this isn't uh, mm. this isn't quite giving me the. Uh, it's not sour enough. I'm getting some bitterness, but I want more sour. Yeah. Yes, from just... from what you, the teacher would be like, yeah. Yeah, totally. A oh, that's... plus. Just fuck yeah. Just try and everyone just try and make sure how crunchy your pictures are. <laughs> yeah, even more so, it'd be a teacher that's trying to like scrape by not knowing anything. All <laughs> right. notes are like. That's true. Uh, Zone, Zone Dog says, well, it can be worse when the client is like, can you make the line weight like 20% thicker in this one area and that one and that one over and over again or something? I would actually prefer that. I mean, you, you say at least crunchy, you get a little bit of license to stay creative, but like, then the person can come back and be like, it's not crunchy enough. And it's just like, well, I don't know what the fuck you mean by crunchy. Like if they say they want the line weight thicker, like, first of all, there's a way to do that in Clip Studio Paint. But also... At least then you have like specific like what they want. Like if somebody like tells me like I don't know, dude. Like your 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 picture is just lacking some umami. I'm just like I don't know, it's, it's, you're describing food. You're describing fucking food. I like to think that art is the food of our soul. You know? Yeah, but well, so. if, if you eat food. Your and soul eats art, man. Your soul has to eat art to live. Bruh. Don't you know, if it's not crunchy, we can't get it to print. I'm gonna save this, unless you wanna draw more on this. I don't, I can't think of any, like, space to, I can, I can fit any sort of substance. Did you draw a Jarhead here. with Jake Gyllenhaali? Uh, you know what? I wasn't thinking of that, but we could say that that is a Jarhead <laughs> with Jake Hill and Hula Hay. Like that movie Jarhead. Starring... I've never seen it. I just know it exists. I haven't either. That's yeah. true. With, I, I reference titles a lot for movies I've never seen. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I reference the movie Jumper a lot, and I've never seen it, but I just know it's not a good movie. I make like a, like a joke off the title, and then somebody's like, yeah, I love that movie, and I'm like, I've never seen it, and they just like stare at me like, 
Why? Why'd you bring it up? Because Sorry. That title exists. I saw an in. I've been waiting for this for twelve years since Jumper came out. Yeah. Don't you know? It's like I'm a liar, like in the movie Shattered Glass, starring also Hayden Christensen. Like you've seen Shattered Glass? No. <laughs> no. I I'm a liar, like in the movie Liar Liar, or like the movie Big Fat Liar. I've, have you seen either? I mean, I, I'm sure you've seen Liar Liar, but have you seen Big Fat Liar with Frank and Nina? A long ass time ago, when I was when I was a wee boy. Me too. I I remember I saw it because my grandma was like babysitting me for like a week for whatever reason. And yeah, but she was all like, I remember oh, is that uh, a movie. who's the bad guy in it? What's, uh, what's the actor's name? Uh, Paul Giamatti. Yeah, all I remember is that Paul Giamatti turned blue. Other than that, I got nothing from the plot. Yeah. I for, uh, yeah, I remember. So basically, like Frankie Muniz is a good liar. He lies all the time, and then he, he is, writes like a he is a big script. fat liar. He has to write like a, a short story about how much he lies because he gets caught. And that's and then, the punishment. And that's the punishment. And then he he somehow gets in a ride with Paul Giamatti in a limo to go to school. Because, whatever. And then... Obviously <laughs> that would happen. I mean, we've all accidentally leave, been in a car with Paul Giamatti. We've all accidentally, like, been late to school because our skateboard's not working. And then a guy in a limo pulls up and says, I'm a Hollywood producer. Hey, you kid, would you like a ride in my limo? And then yeah. you don't die. <laughs> Usually that, when that happens, you're never seen again. Yeah, exactly. The, you, then it's like you're on, like, you're, the, then you eventually like get one of those police officers who's just like, ah, oh, it's been over 48 hours, so chances are the kid's dead. Don't worry, though. Um, we'll make a cool episode of reality TV about him. It's fine. Yeah, don't you worry, though. We're going to get a TV camera in here and everything, and you get to cry at them. Anyways. What? You expected <laughs> us to do anything? <laughs> Lady, you watch too much CSI. I'm gonna draw Paul Giamatti. So am I. I was looking up pictures of him while you were doing... I'm gonna draw Paul Giamatti without looking him up, and you draw Paul Giamatti <laughs> looking him up. Okay, if, but if my... I will do that, but if my drawing doesn't turn out, I'm going to say that I never looked him up. I'm gonna lie. Okay. I'm gonna be a big fat liar. <laughs> You're gonna be a big fat liar. Wow, he said so many different... Hair choices. How do I choose? Do you want goatee, just... bald Paul Giamatti? Do you want completely hairless head Paul Giamatti, which is scary? There is a uh, weird long hair, shaved face Paul Giamatti. There's mustache Paul Giamatti, which I don't even know where that came from. I'm not sure. That's... I'm basically gonna do Paul Giamatti from the movie Sideways, which is like that was that time period. You're, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> I love uh I love James Adomian's Yeah. Paul I know, that's what I always think about. It's so perfect. It's like he sounds exactly like him. Ah jeez. <laughs> I I couldn't even do it if I tried. Ah, I don't like Merlot! I'm not drinking fucking Merlot! That's sideways. Have you seen that movie? Um I haven't. But I uh there is a wine in the movie that people specifically buy at my restaurant just because it gets mentioned in Sideways. I mean, it's like a common wine. You can get it. But I just, I've had multiple people be like, this is one from Sideways. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> cool. Do you I, want it? <laughs> Sideways is one of those movies that like won awards the year it came out. And I remember ever, like hearing a lot about how good Sideways is. So like our whole family watched it and then we were just kind of like, that was okay. I do know that there's a dude who runs out of a, like, the one character that Paul Giamatti's going on the tour with is, like, always having sex with, like, different people on the wine trip, and then he's, like, fucking this one guy's wife, and then he gets caught, and then he leaves, and then they're trying to drive out of the guy's house, and the guy's, like, coming out naked, and his, like, wiener's just flopping everywhere, and I remember being like, oh, wow, that dude just straight up went for it, just, uh... His wiener was sideways. His wiener, no, it was kind of, it was going all in all directions because he was oh. running. There's no way um, to like, there's no way for it to look flattering when you're running. No, no, there's absolutely no way you can. It's just gonna, 
It's just gonna flop. Everywhere. You can walk. So that's my Paul Giamatti. Yours is gonna probably turn out better than mine, honestly. I, I'm, I'm I liking your ball. Oh, I like a. What am I? Oh wow, you're right about him having all these different like hairstyles. I uh, one of my favorite movies, or one of my favorite roles that Paul J. Mike has done is uh, have you ever seen the movie Shoot 'Em Up with Clive Owen? Yes, a long time ago. He was the villain in that movie. And I thought oh, he did okay. a great job. I don't remember that movie very well. I watched it a lot. I know, I, I remember you like, talking about how much you like it. I just, I never really watched it that much. I doubt it really holds up anymore now that I'm an adult who has seen, like, actual movies. But, um, I remember it being fun. I mean, it was basically, like, a, a, an excuse to do, like, ridiculous shoot, shooting scenes. I like that. Five Owen going, like, I'm all about that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, every once in a while, Clive Owen will be like, Oh, you know what do I hate? And then he'll go on like this rant and then shoot somebody by the end of that rant who's doing something that he doesn't like or whatever. He's like, Oh, you know what I hate? I hate guys with ponytails. Because you've got a big fucking tail coming out your back of your head, mate. I don't like that. And then he'll like shoot a dude and like he'll give him a headshot so his ponytail just like falls off. I'm like, That's fine. Does that actually happen in the movie? Yeah. Alright, I'm sure that was just a very specific example of what could happen. Nope, that definitely had. That's like one of the first times he does that. That's like when he introduced that whole trope of that character. He goes, you know, we're all I right. And then he, do, he does all the things I just described two seconds ago. Right, I remember. Oh boy, Paul Giamatti that. is a... Uh... Beautiful Yeah, his flower. eyes. <laughs> He's like... One of those people who, like, I could easily, like, if someone was just like, check out this dog that looks like Paul Giamatti, I'd be like, I don't even have to see the dog. I already know what it looks like. It's a pug, right? It's always a pug. Yeah, but it's, it's, he, like, he kind of has, like, pug eyes. Look, I, I'm not going to stand idly by while you body shame Paul Giamatti. I'm so sorry. I don't <laughs> think so. He can't help what his eyes look like. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to read. Sorry, what? Made a career out of it. He has. I mean, look, if you if you are a famous person and you are not, like, conventionally attractive and you've made a career for yourself, like, that's got to be the hardest shit ever. That's a, like, that's a tough one. Yeah. Like, you have to be, like, actually good at acting in order to make it in, in Hollywood if you're, if you're not a pretty face. Right. And that's probably even, like, more so if you're, like, a woman in Hollywood. Yeah. His nose is huh? a uh, weird nose. It's like it's weird. Yeah, it's got it's a little bulbous on the end, but thin up top. Oh boy, I'm Paul mine. <laughs> um, I'm gonna see what the chat's been up to with their yeah, them fighting. Check in with them. You mommy, I think that was in reference to me saying you mommy. Uh, Kyle put a smurf in a brain with a gun. At a regular sitting distance, that looks like a brain desperately, desperately going. He's right. Out. It does look like that. Oh, uh, I see it. Yeah. Yep. It does. Um, you guys are on the TV now. Big flat, flat big air. Oh yeah, he put he put us on his TV. That's where Kyle's watching us too. Is on the television. Wow, there. that's where we belong. And you know, people are gonna that's start right. saying, "Hey, I seen you on Draw Bomb." We're walking down the street. And we're gonna be like, "Boy, I miss the days when I could just walk down the street, uh, getting bothered." I know, right? Uh, man, I'm getting bothered all the time. I miss being an anonymous. Now I'm bothered. Something like that. I don't know. I think that's what happens. I'm pretty sure, yeah. All about those under ba uh, under eye bags. I agree. I, I think, think that's an important detail. Oh. Austin says to Willem Dafoe that shit. <laughs> so give him like a Willem creepy Dafoe, like, like smile or something? I guess so, yeah. You gotta give him like a... Do... 
Uh, Willem Giamatti. <laughs> Willem Giamatti? <laughs> oh, you gotta do Paul Defoe. <laughs> I gotta do Paul Giamatti first, and then we'll... Okay. Once I feel I've accomplished that task, I'll... It's so hard to do like likenesses. Like it, sometimes I nail it, other times not even close. Right now I'm feeling they're more in the not even close range, but I'm not giving up yet. Like I saw a picture on Instagram earlier today, like an hour or two ago, where somebody drew Benicio del Toro, but they gave him the face of a bull, but he still looked like Benicio del Toro. And I was just like, how? The Fuck! Did you give him a whole animal face and then still make him look like the dude? Like, the hell? It's a tough one. I think I made his eyes too, too uh, adventurous. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they were definitely, uh, they were definitely trying to escape. I don't know how you how. I don't know how you, you get, like, what's, like, the line that you draw that all of a sudden you're just like, that's Paul Giamatti. Right Usually there. when I, I know some people are better at it than me, I'm not going to try to argue that, but I, uh, I, usually it takes me a while and I just tweet. I am like, okay, I finished my first try, and then I'm like, alright, what is definitely not right? And then I fix that, and I slowly do that over time, and then it sometimes ends with the result of it looking right. And then sometimes it ends in me, um, uh, throwing my art degree into a bonfire and running into the rain naked while screaming. Yeah. I had a, they like, one of my assignments in college was to do, like we had to pick a celebrity or some kind of public figure and then do a, a drawing on them, but take the drawing and then like do something fun with the drawing that spoke to what they were known for. So at the time I did Al Franken and, and I do I did him as like a sitting senator picture but he was wearing like a propeller cap because he said it had a background in comedy. And like the drawing looks kind of like Al Franken but it's not like a good, it's not like a drawing where you look at it and you're just like, I want to keep looking at that, you know? <laughs> like it was... uh like, it looked like Al Franken, but it also looked like dog shit, I guess. <laughs> I think that says more about Al Franken than anything. There. It was my Paul Giamatti with reference. The bottom one? Yeah. I think I like the top one better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, you kind of look like Brett Gelman at the bottom. More than... <laughs> it does kind of. The running of Guillermo del Toro's character on Always Sunny. Uh, wait, was Guillermo del Toro a character on It's Always Sunny? If it was, it must have been one of the newer seasons, because I... I'm not all caught oh, up, yeah. but I haven't seen. I need to watch season 14. I think that's the latest one that's been out. I just finally finished... Oh, I didn't finish Dave. Yeah, I still need to. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, but I have finished Seinfeld finally. Oh, nice. Yeah, you did tell me that. Oh, he's... He's Pappy McPoyle? Oh, no shit. He's the guy with the bird under his hat. That's Guillermo del Toro, I guess. Oh. That like, makes sense. You know, the... I guess I did know that. Huh. I forgot about that. I forgot he was in that. I love that episode. That's such a great episode, the though. The Bird Law episode? Yeah. I fucking love it. I love that the dickhead lawyer character gets his eyes pecked out at the end of that episode. One thing I do, but like, uh, so many people are just like, I have a hard time watching It's Always Sunny because I get so secondhand embarrassed for the characters and I'm just like no they're terrible people you don't point. have to feel bad and then like one of my favorite aspects of that show is that like everybody else in the show aside from like the clearly ridiculous characters who are murderers or whatever like everyone else on the show is like just super like calm <laughs> and like normal 
Yeah, they're like hyper normal. Like more so than you'll actually see in Philly are like the char- uh, the side characters on the show are normal. And that, that sort of like helps to like it's perfect because it accentuates how crazy these characters are and like how irredeemably like shitty they are. Yeah. But you're also just like n- n- nobody would be like this calm or like reasonable with these characters. Like they're always like. The number one like line for any side character on it's always sunny after like Mac, Charlie, and Dennis are like doing something stupid is please sit down. My Paul Giamatti looks like a Louis C. K. or something. He does kinda look like Louis C. K. I'm gonna get rid of it now. Bye bye. We should save all these all Should these, we? We should No. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna be like, oops, I lost it, didn't mean to. Shucks. Whoopies. Alright, we have time. Or rock, paper, pencil, or we can just keep drawing some fun stuff, you know, because we're fun guys and all. Let's do Yeah, celebrity. it does have some Sean Connery uh, uh, notes as well, I do see that. What, celebrity switcheroo? Yeah, we can do a celebrity swap and whoops. <laughs> nah, I just want to say like, the name, uh, I don't want to play the game. <laughs> like, we could do something like Benicio Del Toro as a bull because he was Benicio Del Toro as a bull because Toro is a bull in Spanish. I get it. That's that's something right there that they did. Somebody, somebody, you know, they struck gold with that. They sure did. And seriously, it looks like fucking Benicio Del Toro with a bull face and I'm Can so I mad. See? I'm like, how the fuck? Can I see? Um, I have to find it. On you don't have to dig it up. It's really not I can, that important. Right? I can find it. I believe that you can. I, I do believe that. Oh wait, it's even harder because like I don't think there's a way to go to your liked pictures on the. First of all, I think the stupidest thing about Instagram is that like the there's a number functionality. Of I'm curious which one you're gonna go with. Functionality is reduced on like a computer over the phone. Like you can't upload things on the computer. Like you have to be on your phone to upload shit to Instagram. So, like, right. Um, I got like a series of drawings that I want to like show off. I gotta like put it, export them, put them in my Dropbox, download the individual files from Dropbox on my phone, and then go to like it's it's like stupid. Like it's just real let dumb. me post the shit on my like I prefer to do any website on my computer over my phone. So let me just fucking do it. I drew Paul mm-hmm. Giamatti. It came out better this time. Whoa, dude, that looks like a photo. I did it. I'm real good at what I do. And what I do is draw Paul Giamatti. Paul and nothing Giamatti. else. People are like, can I get a portrait of my family? And I'm like, are you the Giamatti family? And they're like, well, no. And I'm like, sorry. Uh, I, only draw, I only draw Paul Giamatti. All G- I do. Not a Giamatti, Giamatti here. Also, also fucking hard to find your liked. Where are the posts that I have liked on Instagram? No one knows. I... They don't exist. They just go straight into the cloud. Uh, yeah, the cloud, and then they they send you ads. You're gonna get right. the Benicio del Toro ads now. Okay, I found it. Um. Alright, one sec. Instagram. I actually did find a way briefly to ha- like modify your internet browser to uh like to put, like you could like set like compatibility mode so that you could like post photos and stuff on Instagram from the computer like through some trickery, but then. Um, to you. Somehow they fixed it, and now you can't. It's like, well, you made it worse. Like, why? Just let me do the shit on my computer. I don't want it, to. It works the same. Okay. I'm gonna post the picture on the draw pile. Okay. Oh my god, no, I'm not. Wait, one sec. You see it? No. Oh, wait, is it in the, the Discord? No, I put oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah, that's him. 
Right? It looks like Vinatra Del Toro, but he's got a bull's face. It's all the and eyes. Like, it's all the eyes. Cause everything it's it's else, 100% the eyes. Everything yeah. else is bull qualities. I just don't... I don't know how you do that. <laughs> I can't. Step one. Try. Be good. And then uh, the next one is Adrian Brody as a dog. Why don't they do that one, though? Because Toro, I get. Yeah, I don't know about... Adrian Brody. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I know somebody with a dog named Brody, but I don't think that's why they did it. No, I don't think so. I feel like that's unrelated, honestly. 100% unrelated. Oh. There he is. That's the eyes again. The that eyes. one's less impressive. There you go, there's a secret. Learn to draw eyes. I'm still working on it. That's why, you know, in the, in the deep fake, like when deep fakes first started, like, existing, that was, like, the one thing that they said that they were working on with deepfake technology that really helped sell the, uh, the likeness for the algorithm or whatever was uh, the uh, like the expressions like yeah. when you when you like have like resting face and when you're happy sad or whatever the fuck like where your facial features move are always so specific to you that like you look different like your face is doing different things when you're sad than somebody else so like half of like what deep fake technology was doing was getting the expressions lined up right or whatever and uh yeah i don't know i just suck at it i can't do it <laughs> i give up don't give up i agree deep fakes are a technology the world did not need um should we do a rock paper pencil sure or, or we can just draw some stuff whatever what, what sounds better this week well we got two people in the chat it's true. If they haven't, if they got any ideas for what a rock paper pencil could look like, you know, they can sound off. Um, okay. But otherwise, it's no, it's no rush. Well, I'm gonna use the bathroom, and I'll be right back. And then we're gonna draw some really great stuff that people are gonna just, they're just gonna lose their minds over, and it won't be Paul Giamatti. We promise. <laughs> it's a one-time thing. Well, so one time, we're not drawing Paul Pio. No, we're not drawing Paul Giamatti. Not Paul Giamatti. Okay, let's see what in the chat says. Zone Dog says, hmm, let's try and figure out what we could draw. What could we draw? I don't have ideas, says Kyle, followed by emojis. I don't either, Kyle. I truly really don't. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. We were talking about what's the worst thing that we could be caught doing on the Zoom chat. Mm, that might be a fun one. Obviously, we can't draw, like, murder or, you know having sex or anything like that which are the actual answers in my opinion of worst things you could be caught doing on the zoom chat but i'm back hello hi I really so like I the a... use of the draw bomb em emote in the chat. It's really getting... It's getting a lot of play. It's getting a lot of play. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I was hoping for. What were you going to say? Well, I was thinking we could do, like, what's the worst thing you could be caught doing on a Zoom chat? Drawing it out. I like that. Let's do that. Uh, all right. Obviously, we can't draw fucking or murder. Or pooping, it's because... Easy. Or sleeping. <laughs> oh shit, that would have been such a great one though. <laughs> Sorry. It's illegal. It's illegal. You can't draw defecation or, or the. You can draw poop. You just can't draw poop <laughs> with a gerund. Right. You can't. You can draw the um, the effect, but not the cause. You can't. You can't just show it in action. Which yeah, I don't really understand why, because it doesn't seem like that big of a deal honestly everybody poops yeah. everybody poops we all poop we all know what pooping is like we're an adult channel like we say the f word and i just talked about a book that 
describe the rape in it. Like, anyway. I just don't see the big hoop hoopla. Hoopla poopla. Rock. Paper. And so. You know what's funny? We could also, at some point, we could open up, like, or save a template for rock, paper, pencil, and then do, like, the thing for that. But yep, that'd be smart. I don't even know how to, like, open opening up a file. I don't know if you could open it up in this server. Oh, without, yeah. Like, I'm not sure if I could. We'll have to try it sometime. Yeah, we'll play that. One of these weeks, we should play some drawing, Jackbox drawing games on the show. I agree. We could even, I don't know if you're down tonight, but we could do some tonight when, you know, if you uh, if, we, if we reconvene later on. I'm going to see what's going on after this, and I'll let you know. But cool. there is a let solid know. chance. But if it doesn't happen tonight, how about next week's show? If we can gather some people to play with us. If we can't, we'll just do a normal show. Yeah. Uh, Austin and Kyle, do you guys want to be on playing some Drawful with us next draw? How many players is it max? Eight? Eight, yeah. Uh, Austin also says scribble, like I think that means... ice scribble, or not ice scribble. Um, scri scribble dot the one that's like Pictionary, but it's like web browser. Oh, no, I have not. That's another thing we can do. <laughs> we got a uh, uh and a sure, so like they're both enthusiastic about this, which I am. Yes. I mean. I, I can feel their enthusiasm. It's getting me pumped as well. I'm gonna hide your layers. Hot. I'm not sure what, what I'm gonna draw yet, but I'm gonna call it something. I have a couple ideas, and I gotta think of which one would be the best one. I already made my joke about watching Big Bang Theory and. <laughs> I threw that one right in the trash. Mm. I'm gonna call it a video call, not a Zoom call, because we're not sponsored. Right. And also, I've never used Zoom, so I don't. It's like. It's the most popular uh, one right now. It is like I think it's it's popular because you can create like a like a room code for your company or whatever, but I I think Discord's functionality is just better. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm holding Kyle out, says so. he was on. Sorry, go ahead. I say I'm holding out. That's why I don't. It's not like me to Zoom. Yeah. Um. Kyle says, unsure, I was AFK partially. We're just <coughs> seeing if you want to play some Jackbox party games with us for Drop Bomb next week. The drawing ones, though. I'm going to hide your layers. I'm not sure what to draw. That's also something we should, that's also something we gotta figure out before we do it. No, Kyle, you don't have to own the game, but we do have to find a way to get everybody Discord. Yeah, Discord would be the way to do it. Do you think it would work with like a number of yeah. people? Yeah, it will work. Okay. We yeah, might... we we made it work with uh with Dr. Soundtrack and all those folks. That's true. Okay, yeah, we can do that. No, you don't have to own it. I'll just stream it from here. Do you have a drawful too? I do. I do. Oh, perfect. Because I, I have, I, you know, I think we both have all the party pack games. That's also something we should make sure works because I think a lot of them I have through you. So I'm not sure we'll be able well, to play you, them simultaneously. You can still play it through me and then oh, yeah, stream it because I don't need to have it open. <laughs> You're right. Cool. Yeah, I have, I have some and you have some, and between us we have them all. Yeah. <laughs> what is Among Us, uh, Kyle? I don't know what that is. Okay. Oh wait, I, I've seen I've seen people talking about it, but I haven't played it. Oh, is that the one? You're on like I a think ship. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like it started as like a 
like an app or something, or it's also an app, but basically it's like pretty simple, but it's like, yeah, there's like an imposter game. Yeah, is that like out. the Space Dudes? With the sp yeah. yeah, okay, I've seen that on Steam. Yeah, me too. What the hell do I draw? I have a couple of ideas, but I want like the best one. I have no ideas, and I want just one, okay one, that I can lose with respect. Yeah, Drawful's fun, especially because uh, we could we could get a lot of mileage out of Drawful too, because you can make your own like prompts, but also you can download other people's prompts to like play like their oh, yeah, like, episodes that, that, that they thing. made. You'll have to show me how to do that. I mean, you told were telling me about it, but I don't know exactly. Yeah, you, you basically set it up in the game. Like it's you get like yeah, I'll show you how. And if you're able to play tonight, we could get a test run on that whole thing. Okay, I'll let you know. Yeah, I can post it. I have to see what my roommate's up to after this. It's kind of ridiculous. I still have no idea what I'm gonna do. I'm just setting up <laughs> some. <laughs> setting up like the, the chat some stuff that will be the thing. same no matter what, yeah. Just think of like, uh. Think of, uh. You know, what you, uh. Would hate to. You know, something that you do. Think of the worst thing to be caught doing on a video call. Oh! It's not. Sex pooping or whatever. This is something that I'm gonna say that's gonna set nobody off except for Zone Dog. But Zone Dog, my family has switched to off brand Cheez Its. What do they call them? I, I just need to hear the name of these off brand what are they like. Cheese crackers. Oh, they didn't even try. I was expecting like. Yeah. Cheddar Its or. <laughs> Ch cheddar Thems. <laughs> But I will tell you, we have uh, we also started doing wheat thin, uh, off brand wheat thins. What are those called? Um, those are called woven wheats. Come on, that's so poetic. That's what you. Oh my, it makes me mad. That's what you call a off brand Trisket. God damn it. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm sorry. They're, oh, they're the off -brand I, was, I was ready to fight somebody. Bullshit. Wheat thins are the the ones that are tasty. I forgot. Yeah. No, we don't have any off-brand wheat. We actually did have off-brand wheat thins. I forget what those were called. But no, the off-brand triscuits are woven wheats. Wheat thin off-brand is called uh, grain skinnies. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that you're not you're not far off. I remember them being something very similar. I think uh, woven wheats just has such a poetry to it. Granted, Triscuits is kind of dumber, right? It's just the one that got popular first. No, I mean, Triscuits and Wheat Thins are 
totally different things. I know, but I'm saying compared to woven wheats. Oh, well, I mean, woven wheats are like the store brand, like your grocery store that just made their own yeah, version. Yeah, I understand, to, but I'm saying the name Trisket only seems normal because we've heard it a thousand times. It's pretty dumb. I see what you're saying, yeah. No, Trisket is a, is a fucking bullshit word. It doesn't exist. I In fact, I'm other... actually curious how they came up with Trisket. Like, they had to have other nonsense words on the ready, and they just had to vote. Uh, Zone Dog says Triscuits are apparently thus named because they were baked thrice. So, it's a biscuit that was baked three times. Is it? Oh, is it a snack from the UK originally? That would make a lot of sense. Or is it, uh, does tracker, triackers not, <laughs> not, <laughs> triackers. Sound, not sound as good? Tri, 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 tri. Hmm. Then what about tricks? Are those big tri, trice? Apparently, apparently uh, Zone Dog learned that factoid. About um, Triscuits from uh, from Jeopardy. Jeopardy. I should. I, every time we go over to my girlfriend's grandfather's house, who's ninety, he always wants to watch Jeopardy, and I'm always like, "Hell yeah, let's watch it!" Like I enjoy it. I love Jeopardy. I'm like yay, it's Jeopardy time. They had it on Netflix. I think they might still have Netflix. Yeah, like, they uh, do, and I'm, I'm gonna mean to actually Hall of Fame. watch some of that. They have uh, some Jeopardy on Hulu, I believe, as well. I still am drawing a blank on what this person's going to be doing, which I, I need to come up with something now. 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 You know what I found out recently uh, that I thought was interesting in the art community? What's that? is that uh, apparently some folks do not agree on the effectiveness, on the efficacy of the Loomis head. Okay, and why is that? Uh, some of them just don't think it's, you know, like it depends on how your brain is able to learn and do information, but some folks are just like, yeah, the Loomis head just kind of fucks me up and I, I learn better by doing it slightly differently. Okay. So you know how, you know how the Loomis head is like, I actually had to Google it because I was like, I think I know what you're talking about, but I just want to verify. Not like um, the head with the lines. Yeah, so you draw the circle and then yeah. you draw the line halfway through, and then you add the jaw. I suppose if you I've, can make a product, it's a good learning technique. But if you can do it a different way, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I just uh, I've always found that the way I've been taught to do them as heads was not necessarily wrong. I'm like, I've, I always use them as heads or some sort of variation of them, but I always feel like the head shape could be more better represented than just a straight up circle. I don't know. Right. I, I usually, yeah, I, I end up like, instead of doing like a perfect circle, I make the plate, the face flatter or something like that. Uh, it's just interesting that like some folk are, you know, there's still not agreement that like the Loomis head is something that's maybe perhaps the most handy uh, that's fair. I can see that. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's... Like, I still have... Like, even if I do a Loomis head and I try and do it, like, a head from, like, a weird angle, I'll still have a hard fucking time drawing that face and head. So it's like, what good are you? You're basically teaching me how to draw a three-quarters head over and over again, Loomis. Well, that's how everybody's real head looks, so it's very helpful. Since I finished that Chuck Paul Newark book, I started reading World War Z, uh, which is interesting because it's a better book. Is that also Chuck Paul Chuck, Okay, I was just going to ask you. Yeah, I didn't know if you wrote that one too. 
No, this one's by Max Brooks. It's by uh, the guy who wrote the Zombie Survival Guide, which I had back in high school. Also okay. gave me that copy. But uh, it's interesting. You can tell that dude did a like. It's basically like a collection of interviews after the World War Z, um, from like people talking about the experience leading up to the zombie invasion and like during and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, it's interesting because you can tell that the author did research for the book. Like he has like writing, like char like he has like the perspective of characters from like a number of different like countries and like geopolitical reason regions and things like that and like you could tell that they did research uh on maybe certain conflicts that are, were going on at least in 2006 when he wrote the book i think yeah so it's it's interesting because it's like a more it's like a like it's interesting to see a book about zombies and then be like oh no you did your research <laughs> but it's like not like research about zombies, but about like the regions that he's writing about. That's kind of I don't know cool how it acts like fictional based upon real things. Yeah. So and like I'm not sure like how accurate some of the uh, things he's talking about. Like from what I can tell, it, you know, it, it's good good enough research. I, it, it, it's 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 better written too than the Chuck Palahniuk book. It's just a, it's overall more of a, an enjoyable experience than the Chuck Palahniuk has been. No fun to read two stinkers in a row. Yeah, I was wondering like, oh man, maybe I'm just like a shitty reader again. It's just like, oh no, they they the way the first book, the way the Chuck Palahniuk book was written was just kind of confusing. Also, not liking the book doesn't make you a shitty reader. No, but it's like I had to keep going back to like earlier chapters in the Chuck Palahniuk book to be like, what the fuck? Am I like what missing something here? Oh, I got you. It's like, no, it's just the way. Like I would have read that Chuck Palahniuk book, book way faster if I wasn't confused half the time reading it. That's fair. You know what's funny? I can use my, my, my custom font I made for myself. Oh yeah, cool. I wonder if I'll be able to see it. I should be able to see it at least. Let me see. It's under... I named it Ian Newton Handwriting. I called mine Brandon's Hand. Brandon's Hand. Brand Hand! It's on Ian one. Oh, I can see it, but uh, that's so strange. Oh yeah, when you make the layer invisible, it still you shows can't the hide font. Text. Also, I don't see it in your font, so I should oh, have. Weird. I do have your font though. Unless you changed it. Huh? No, for some reason I set it as that font, and then when I started typing, it changed it. Cause I love I love Draw Pile, but it's got some kinks. That's pretty janky. I used to make this font though. I, it does look interesting. I could see reasons to get the full version for like certain perks it has for like its font creation. Like you can like set the spacing more custom between like individual letters and things like that. But also, who's got the money for that shit? Man? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know who does. Um, also, I can still see your text, but I'm not gonna look at it. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately.
I gotta say though, having the font be in like my actual handwriting looks really nice. It's cool, but at the same time, like, you're like, I don't know how to solve this problem yet. You've chosen to write Forge the font ahead. in your own handwriting, which you could totally do with my own handwriting. Your own handwriting. <laughs> Yeah. That's alright. It does look nice. Well, anyone in the chat, they can definitely see uh, what I'm going on about, at least. Yeah. For sure. I am going to draw something over top of both of our drawings, okay. but I promise it's going to be worth it. Oh, yeah. default like I, ch I set the font and then like it wants to default to like just standard like bleh so I started my parents have been trying to get me to watch the show Shit's Creek yeah. For quite some time now. Pretty good show, actually. Yeah, I enjoy it. From what I've seen, I like it. We're on season two now. We just started. But yeah, it's enjoyable. It gives me a lot of rest development vibes. Um, but uh, it's interesting because, you know, the characters are like ultra rich, spoiled assholes. Mm -hmm. And you don't expect them to end up being so sympathetic. And I would argue that they become sympathetic characters almost too quickly. Because, like, for how rich and famous and how terrible they are, like, I, I, I'm i like, you would still be pretty terrible. Like, you've only been there for a few months. Like, you're still going to be, like. Yeah. Like, I understand because. You know, obviously you don't want to like... If the characters are too unlikable, you have to have some other angle or people lose interest. Exactly. But, so the characters themselves become, you know, more sympathetic. But also I'm just like, I get it, and I, I do like these characters, but they're not believable as having been rich their whole lives. Especially like to the degree that they like... The characters say in, in the show. Yeah. Like the one, the one daughter character is always like, I was kidnapped by a Saudi prince, and I'm just like, okay, but like you would not be like friendly to these people as you are, like so so soon. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I never, I never thought about that, but I guess they do kind of move quickly through that. But I think they're still shitty for a long time. You know. Oh, they're still definitely shitty, but like the shittier. You know, they they would be shittier in my opinion. <laughs> I don't have a very high opinion of rich people, what can I say? That's fair. I don't know what caused you to feel that way, but... I don't right. know why <laughs> well, who could... built those preconceived notions, but... What could possibly be giving me such ideas? I'm coloring mine kind of shitty and quickly, just because I was behind, but... I'm almost done. That's alright. Uh, yeah, I'm color I actually just started coloring mine now, and it's gonna be real quick. I've also gotten further in the game Wander Song, which I am still loving. Wander Song? Wander Song. It's on Xbox Game Pass. You can, okay. If you have a subscription to that, you can I get did. it. But it's kind of like, it's got like Paper Mario vibes. Like, it's just like a colorful, fun adventure. You're like a little kid bard who like goes around solving problems by singing and friendship. Like, basically, it's the end of the world and the game is you're just tr you're trying to stop the end of the world and your character doesn't like violence so you solve all your problems in the game by being friendly and, and listening and oh. singing and i it's kind of a it's got real good feel good vibes and it's kind of like what i need right now <laughs> yeah i should check that out yeah. especially if it's on games pass because i paid for that shit yeah get your money's worth the good stuff 
and it's it's really fun, and it's just like it's it, it just makes me feel happy whenever I play it. And you you can like unlock dances if you find like these special hidden areas, and like the dances don't do anything except I do them half the time I'm playing the game because I'm like my character would be dancing. Right so I just like start dancing. I hear one of the dances you can unlock is the dab. Oh, and normally that would annoy me in any other game, but for this game, I think it's charming. You want to unlock it? I do, I actually really want to unlock the dab. I also, since we last talked, like, two days later, I finished all of Tim and Eric Awesome Show's great job, <laughs> including the, Chris, the Krimbus special and the 10-year reunion. Wow. Which is wild. It's wild to see the 10-year reunion episode because everyone is legitimately, like, 10 years older. So yeah. Kinda, I've, seen, I've like, seen them live a few times, times since uh, they've been off the air. But um, have you watched Bedtime Stories yet? That's uh, that's next on the docket. Okay. Uh, now we're doing frisky. My, I, I was watching with my brother, so we decided to do some frisky dingo since that's like okay. a. My brother loves that show. show. Who's that? My brother is a big fan of that show. Zach is a big big fan of that show. I'm he, okay he with says, that. Like, what was I'm that? I'm okay with it. It's not my favorite, but. I yeah see I, I mean I when I was like sort of in college I watched I've watched Archer more yeah. than I've or you know before so I think. Archer, I I like Archer and I sort of in more of a mindset to be like this thing that I just watched is a thing I enjoy and will take with me wherever I go in my mind. But I do enjoy how Frisky Dingo is a comedy show that there's no status quo. So like it's constantly just like a rolling adventure, like nothing's ever staying the same. Right. Characters are like having cha things happen that change them and like that's just the show it's like there's no normal for them to go back to at the beginning of every episode which is kind of really refreshing because like so many shows including like archer and others you know there's always a status quo that you start from yeah like i get it because it's also fun to have that status quo because you feel like it's like a, a stable place you can launch different episode plots from but also i do really enjoy how frisky dingo there's just like this just keeps going like it's just crazier and crazier with every episode because there is no status quo to go back to which i think is a it, it it's i i understand maybe why shows don't do that because you can't just like hop in and be like all right i what's going on i don't know but i can kind of put it together because you can't with that show you have to watch from the beginning or else you're just going to be on this wild ride where like nothing makes sense but i do also appreciate that like just kind of like a, a continual storyline that's just like like we were kind of doing that with waterlog like in waterlog you know like the status quo is they're on the ship and then they they're off the ship by the next chapter and like we don't you know it's a, it's a constant movement which i think it's constantly different as the show goes on or the yeah um, that, the show and the, and the comic you know so uh I do sort of uh, enjoy that aspect of it. I, I wish yeah, there were more cool. things like that. Including Waterlog. Yeah, Waterlog's good. Alright, mine's done whenever. I just gotta color a couple of other things and then I am good. I'm not, I don't remember what we said, but Kyle says some people would consider you rich. It's about perspective. Oh, uh, when I said I don't like rich people. Oh, okay. So basically he's saying some people would not like you. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I, I, to <laughs> no, be fair, I, I, I did grow very privileged. Um, I mean, that's the awesome. house I'm sitting at is my parents' house, and they have a pool and everything. But, like, we're not, like, you know. I know. Like, that's not consider... the point he was making. I was just joking. Oh, yeah. Even Kyle was with... like, no, no. <laughs> no, it wasn't about people liking you. It was just about... I want to be liked. What you have is more or less depending on perspective. Absolutely. Everyone's got more or less than somebody else. Oh, no, my mistake. Kyle says, no, what he was saying is that you're ugly. Oh. And now that we have webcams, everyone knows just how That's ugly we are. Oh, everyone, let's zoom in on this big bump on my forehead you know, right now. Some people would consider you beautiful. It's about perspective. 
uh, I consider me beautiful. That's why I jerk off in front of a mirror. It seems like it'd be difficult cleaning the mirror all the time. I have to, I spend a lot of money on mirrors and clean up. <laughs> At a certain point, the mirrors need to be replaced. Look, man, the Windex industry would not be where it is today without me. And yes, eventually it does eat through the reflective coating on the mirrors. <laughs> What's behind the mirror? Uh, it's just like a fucking... Is it going to another dimension? Well, no, what, actually, when I... So, like, one time I jizzed so hard on my mirror that, like, it ate off the reflective material. And then there was, like, a whole police squad behind it just, like, listening in on microphones. Oh, I thought they all hid inside of vans that are, like, bread trucks or some flower trucks or something. Nah, it's like a, a one-way mirror. Oh, I get it. Ta-ha! <laughs> Welcome to Draw Bomb. We explain our jokes. <laughs> Hidden Pixel Play says, oh, hey, cameras now. True. That's oh, right. it's Plead the we Filth. We got him. Hello. Welcome, Smoke. and you've changed your name. Smoke him if you got him. I don't got him. I don't, yeah, I don't have anything to smoke either, so it kind of sucks. I mean, granted, you could smoke anything. That's true, I have smoked cat piss. I talked about that on another <laughs> episode. I don't recommend that, though. Um, no, me neither, it's terrible. Don't I mean, follow I mean, Ian's lead. Cat piss. That's what you say. That maybe you thought you were blazing the trail with, no, no pun intended, with new drugs. I mean, I was, as you said, no pun intended, but I was blazing something. Cat piss. Yeah, a lot of ammonia. It's that okay was the worst to because I was well, sorry. What was that? It's okay to smoke cat piss. It's, it's only bad if you smoke cat piss and bleach at the same time because then you will die. That's true. Yeah, actually, that is actually uh, the acid mixing with the base cause chlorine gas breathing it right directly into my lungs uh, to the people in the chat every time you use the draw bomb bomb emoticon uh, 10 cents is given to Ian's computer fund oh that'd be nice <laughs> uh, so you know it's not true actually I was also not trying to smoke. Like I wasn't actively trying to smoke cat piss when we did smoke. It was just there was that. a thing that we I smoked like that had cat piss on it. I feel like I needed to explain that every time I tell that story because somebody could be like, "Wow, Ian's gone off the deep end." We, where would you say I mean, you are in, in re relation to the pool? Uh, far, far, far away. Is that like you've gone through the deep end and then gotten out of the pool and kept going, or you're just you've gone the opposite way? You went out through the shallow end, up the steps, and now you're you're like in the house. So I went in the deep end into the pool skimmer, and then uh, like that Chuck Palahniuk book about the kid whose butt gets sucked to the the pool thing, and he has to like chew through his intestines. Oh God, that's a, that's his book. Yeah, he wrote that book. But, uh. I'm not gonna read anything of this. I'm just gonna enjoy Fight Club and leave it at that. Fight Club's good. Choke is good. Snuff is good. You don't need to read anything else. Invisible Monsters has a lot of detailed description of plastic surgery to rebuild somebody's shot-off jaw, and uh, I've never read that that book with the aforementioned story, but I don't want to because I hear it's. True. And I mean, what I read the, the Chuck Palahniuk book I did read described a 13-year-old getting raped. So I mean, I don't fucking need to go any more down that rabbit hole of terrible things that he's written. So Kyle says, because Hidden Pixel, or Plead the Filth, or whatever, uh, said, he, he used the uh, emote as well, and then Kyle said, oh shit, is your emote for non-subs too? I feel less special. Emote's not behind a paywall. And then so Hidden Pixel Kyle, what says, happens is, I can no, unlock a random that. emote with channel points, but there's only one, <laughs> so you automatically get it. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, there'd be more if we got some more subscriptions, so, uh... Yeah, basically, Kyle, you allowed us to have an email by subscribing. You get one. You get one. Yeah. Without anybody subscribing. Then you need a number of them to unlock another. 
Nice. I can also make some for higher tier subscribers, but I just feel like that's not necessary yet because what what sucker would do that? Right, let's spend the let's extra money. Oh, dingus. Alright, I am ready. Alright, I'm gonna reveal yours. I'm <laughs> <laughs> doing our own show. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty. I'm embarrassed every week we do this. Are you wearing pants right now? Uh, I am, but I thought it was a nice touch to draw me without pants. I do enjoy that. That is good. Well, that is a rock, paper, pencil right there. Not by it. Yep. Make sure you vote on Twitter for who won this week's rock, paper, pencil, or last week's, or we you know whichever week it is. Um, we might be playing some Jackbox game later on tonight, depending on how Brandon's roommate is... Uh, is, is is doing my roommate who is my female roommate his female roommate who he kisses on the face yeah but she's okay with it so yeah it, it, it's, no need it's to call the police <laughs> yeah she's okay with it he's it's it's agreed <laughs> um you got compliments on the dynamic angle in your drawing which i also agree i like the shadows <laughs> <laughs> on the underside like is that but okay? It's belly button lint. Oh, that is a, a gaping belly button. It's like a. <laughs> it's a veritable crater. And I like that he has the knockoff cheeses. Yeah, he's the got cheese the cheese crackers. crackers. It's also weird because your font is like so much tinier. Like I increased the font size it's very small. myself. I can almost not even like, read the word that it's lint. Do you want to mess with that at all before we save well, it and use it is... on the? We need our font is 16. Ah, uh, good. Now that the show is just about over, we have five viewers. <laughs> oh, great. What a perfect timing. I merged them with the layer. If you're new to I the show... I... There we go. Thanks for tuning in. The show's almost over, but you should subscribe so you don't miss it next week. Or us playing games during the week. And also just because we're just, you know, we're just nice people. And, and we deserve it. Also, I think I'm a nice guy. I like this guy. Also, you should up the uh, font size on the bottom one, too. It's still teeny. Oh, I thought I wrote that one out with my hand. Well, it turns out I also fonted that. Hey, who can tell anymore? Um, Kyle wants me to stand up and prove that I'm wearing pants, uh, but I will not <laughs> give in to the terrorist demands. I am wearing pants, and let me tell you, they're great. I'm looking at them right now. This is, wow. This, they're beautiful. And what pants? He says, hashtag proof pants. <laughs> hashtag pants. Don't listen to Kyle. He's trying to create a conspiracy about my lack of pants, but I'm wearing them, and boy, they're nice. Um, Hidden Pixel Play says, I forget when you guys stream. Uh, Mondays at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then, uh, off schedule, we, we play some games during the week, usually. We're starting to do that more. Yeah, especially since, uh, you know, we... Uh... We, we, we got all the hookups now. Kyle also doesn't believe that I have legs. Um, well, I do. Um, uh, One time so. I saw him wearing camo pants, though, or I think they were camo pants. I couldn't tell because I couldn't see him. Um, so I still actually don't have any confirmation myself that he has legs. Yeah, I mean... Part of me just wants to stand up and prove it, but also part of me likes to keep the mystery alive of whether or not I have legs. Now it's, that's going to be the, uh, the that's, draw bomb lore, that's is gonna, that brand doesn't have legs. <laughs> it's not canon. Don't tell anybody I don't have legs. It's not true. Got I've legs, had legs my whole life. There's feet on the end of them. There's feet on the end of those legs. Look, look with your special legs. <laughs> my bad. All right. My brain. Wait, let me save this before I forget. Yeah, make sure you folks tune in at 8 o'clock every Monday Eastern Standard Time uh, to catch some draw bomb. Um, make sure that you uh, like and subscribe and sub if you can, if you have the money. Uh, make sure you check out our sweet ass emoji. It's um, so nice. It's make good. sure 
it is a nice emoji. You can put sunglasses on it, and it's perfect for putting like a thinking hand on it. Yeah. Uh, make sure you check out Hidden Pixel Plays. They play video games, and, and he's got a good YouTube channel and everything. Um, you got anything you want to plug? Um, I just want to plug the fact that I have legs. They're real. They they're great. Uh, I walk around all the time. I um, I'm not just half a man despite what everybody says about me it's not true uh, I'm watch, half the man I used to be uh, watch draw bomb at 8 o'clock uh, watch draw bomb at an hour and 20 2 hours and 20 minutes ago it's good stuff yeah. check out our YouTube channel check out our discord and check out our Twitter definitely subscribe because it Give us gives me bits. a little bit of dopamine and I need some right now So I need some serotonin uh, watch Paul Giamatti's filmography. Yeah, make sure you watch Big Fat Liar starring Paul Giamatti and Frankie Muniz, who uh, Frankie Muniz unfortunately probably does not actually remember making <laughs> that movie. It's true. Um, which is very tragic. It is tragic. Um, a lot of tragedy. So on that note, um, on that chipper note. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna play us out. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Never know how to end these things. Bam 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 Oh no, he's gonna do something embarrassing, isn't he? Embarrassing? What? <laughs> this like, might be a little embarrassing. <laughs> it's funny to me. Are you doing the, the death thing? Yeah, the death. <laughs> Alright. On that note, adios!